Ich bin es. Hi, welcome back to the Headbangers podcast where you host Nathan and Brad. Today we're trying something a little different. As you know, recently we have been trying to mix up our content, seeing what works, what doesn't. Um, we've seen some good reception on some of the new things that we're trying. So we thought we'd just swing some vinyl into the mix. You know that me and Nathan don't keep it quiet that we're both a massive vinyl addicts. Isn't that right, Nathan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, time to open up the vault, really, isn't it? Time to open up the vault, which is actually the name of this series, The Vinyl Vault. Um, pick two two vinyls that we both really like, something that, you know, well, technically they're both given by gifts, weren't they? So one was from Nathan yeah. and one was from our mate Caleb that we mentioned a lot on the podcast. So. Yeah, yeah. Right, Nathan, you want to start us off then? What, what vinyl have you brought out of the vault so, today? I've got Incendiary, right? Incendiary, 1,000 yards stair. Oh, no, mile stair. Sorry, I always <laughs> fuck up. Uh, but yeah, 1,000 mile stair. It's fucking right out, out album um, from a hardcore band from Long Island. If you haven't heard about Incendiary, check them out. They're really good. Um, it is the... I actually got the receipt as well, so I can tell you exact the exact model of it. It is the neon and orange uh, cyan twist in white. That's a long um, name. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, like, about like it, it's like a really nice um, vinyl. You open it up, uh, it's got like this really cool wide shot of the band playing. Of that, um, I, I like about hardcore inside. vinyls and stuff, and like hardcore albums. Like they've always got like the crowd on the on the covers. It's cool. Yeah, and then it, it, it like obviously like I think with most vinyls now, like the the it, the info as well as like. The hold of the vinyl is just the same thing. Yeah. Um, so if you can see, uh, product in New York on the front. Um, and yeah, it's, it's fucking sick. Like, the colors. Like, oh, that's nice. They're sexy as fuck. Um, it came out on Closed Casket in early, like, I think 2017 or something like that. Um, this one's a repress, so it's not one of the first editions because um, all, all the first editions are sold out. Um, quite hard to actually get in, get get to. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, like, I mean, if you look at Closed Casket, they're, they're kind of like the kings of a, a hardcore record record label, like Closed Casket as activities have been like bands like Gulch. Um, oh, God, I think Gate Creeper released a few oh, nice. um, so al- really- like albums on Closed Casket. So like really picking up the like the new wave of hardcore and then like kind of bringing them to the limelight a bit. Well, they've got they've got like bands like End as well. Yeah, um, I've got another one of the, like a band like a vinyl from End as well as like Gate Creeper in there. Um, I mean like if we look at the the actual um, the actual list like of bands that's on there. Um, I mean it's like all these smaller bands, that, but I mean like from listening to quite a few. Um, there's quite a quite a few I like. So, um, God's Hit for one are on there. Um, they're pretty fucking get like good. Um, you know, uh, Gate Creeper. I think they were on there. I think they've moved to a different record label. Yeah. Um, and obviously Incendiary and Gulch. Um, there's quite there's quite a few that I haven't really had the chance to check out, but they're all really fucking. They normally have really good bands on on closed yeah. casket. Um, but yeah, like. I mean, like the album as a whole, really, really solid out album. Um, I mean, like my, I think my personal favourites from this is um, "Still Burning." Yeah, um, it's the first track. I'm reading it off the back because um, it's a lot. If it's there, it's there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's still burning. Um, that's a fucking unreal track. But as well, like the product is you. Um, I, I think you find with Incendiary, they're quite a politically motiv- motivated band, um, which I mean, most hardcore bands are here. When you go, oh, they're a politically <laughs> motivated ha- hardcore band, it kind of goes, like, you can't have one without the other, man. Yeah, that um, is true. <laughs> but yeah, no, like, the, the, the lyric writing in it, um, I mean, like, it's one of those things where it's not, like, um, super obvious. What I find, like, with some ba- with some people when they try writing, um politically motivated lyrics a lot of the time like sometimes you might get just if someone's not as good as a, a lyric writer like you'll get just like shit like you're yeah, trump's an asshole man 
Yeah, I think it's yeah, it's, I mean, it's a bit cringe when like bands fuck try the too government. Hard. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, like I guess in like the olden days in the punk times, it was it was a bit more cool because it was fresh. Like nobody was doing that at the time. But then when people are trying to like recycle the same lyrics or just try and like create a statement that's just so blatantly on the nose, it just comes off like very cringe. So I think it's nice for a band to do it like even metaphors or you know not something that's right in your face, but you can kind of guess it yourself if you clever enough i guess yeah no like like if you read into the lyrics it means that there's like quite a few sort of meanings in there and, um but yeah they're, they're a fucking sick band um and i think they've got like that old school sort of feeling to yeah. them um they're still for, like i imagine if if like they'd come out in the 90s like they would have fucking tore house uh, but they've also got that uh, got a really original sound um you can. I, I think you can. If you if you hear Incendiary once, once you hear another Incendiary song, you know that that's them. Um, yeah. And like they're doing really well at the moment. They're fucking sick. Uh, yeah. So yeah. That's that's mine. I, I I haven't listened to too much of Incendiary to be honest. Like, I've, there's a, that album. I do recognize the cover, so I think I've got a song or two from that album liked. Yeah. Um, like, it's got a very take heavy a sound. To sort of appreciate this album. Yeah, that is, like, that is like, awesome. Like, it's like it tells you all you kind of need like to know like you just got a feeling it's some like like a political statement um, yeah as well as like obviously it fits with the name thousand miles there yeah um, but as well like it's just it, it's just like quite an interesting like album to sort of like art to kind of pick apart yeah because it's very simplistic in design but it does what it needs so yeah, that's that, that's my album I've oh, brought, yeah? brought out from the vault. I'll uh, have to check that one out. Um, so if I get into my vault, this is one that Nathan gifted to me for my birthday, which I'm very appreciative of. Um, this is Mastodon, Blood Mountain. So, I mean, if, you, if you're into metal, you're probably going to know Mastodon. They're quite a big name. Um, this is an album that kind of took the career to a new level. Like Everyone always says that Leviathan you know, was the magnum opus. And to be fair, I do prefer Leviathan over Blood Mountain. However, uh, Blood Mountain was more critically received than Leviathan, even though people think that's the way around. And they've had a very interesting career, you know, changing from the first album that came out to the last one. Like, there's a sonic change in there, which can't be denied. But Blood Mountain, I'd say, is the album where they started to go towards the new sound in a way, but still retained a lot of the heaviness that the first you know, its predecessors managed to give. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful artwork. Uh, let me just check who actually did it. Um, it's Paul A. Romano. Fucking sick album art. Like, that is Wait, incredible. It, Paul's name rings a bell. So Paul yeah, A. Che- Romano. Yeah, check him out. Because I I, I've, I, think I've heard the name as well. He must have done some more than just Blood Mountain. Let me, let me have a look. Because I'm sure he's done some, like... Yeah, he's done... Oh, it looks like he's done most of the Mastodon albums, to be fair. That makes a lot of sense because they do have some sort of consistency with their album covers. Yeah, like I'm sure he's, he's like famous for something other than that. Like it, it's his name sounds incredibly familiar. Um, I think he's done. I think he's done some of Trivium's album artwork. Um, yeah. Oh man, no. he looks fucking familiar. Um, I wonder. I, I I swear I've heard the name a million times before. Um, yeah, I mean it's quite possible he's done quite a lot. Especially you said Trivium. Trivium was like a massive band at the time as well. I mean they still are, but um, when they broke out, it was the same time that Mastodon broke out. So I guess and someone put a good word in for a poll somewhere. But yeah, like I, I'm sure I've, I've heard his name pop up a couple of times he might have even done some artwork for some movies maybe most likely yeah um but this album uh this is the earth element because they like to continue with an elemental theme for the first few like including crack the sky which is obviously uh, you know air element <laughs> uh but yeah this is really cool um i love the artwork to this i've always admired it quite a lot um but let's get into the actual vinyl let's get into the meat and potatoes of this um so Marble finish. Look at that limey colour. It's absolutely beautiful. Like I'm very appreciative, Nathan, for getting me this because 
It's not one of my favorite. I, albums, I almost but... didn't want to give it to you because I was there, like, I kind of want to keep that for myself. You know, um, I'd say fair. I'm not the biggest Mastodon but fan. No, um, you're not. To be fair. Hey, did you tell them? Have you, you haven't told them the story of what happened though. Oh yeah, let's get a bit of backstory on this one. Go on there if you want to explain. So I ordered it for your birthday. It came pretty much like a couple of days before, didn't it? Yeah. Because I remember messaging you about it. And what had happened was I got like a, a message notification on, on Facebook saying, so-and-so wants to um wants to send you a message. And I immediately thought one of those spam accounts. Yeah, this is the but thing. Like, like, you could have been so close to deleting that message and that you would never would have known where this yeah, is. Yeah, like, because like the amount of stupid ones, like, hey, big boy, do you want to see my <laughs> anus? Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> sign up to this link below. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, fair enough. Um, but no, like this one, like looked like it was actually written out by a person. So I'm like, ah, maybe they're being smart. Like, did, I'm like, did you order something from Evil Greed? I'm like, okay, how would they know this? How would yeah, they know this? Too specific. And turns out, uh, the fucking somehow it got shipped from Germany, made it all across from Germany, completely fine. But the minute it landed in the UK, the DPD driver dropped it off two streets away. Can you believe that? that? No, but you know the thing is, like I say, two streets. It is two streets, but like it's pretty like far away. Like it's not. She lives at like number like ten. I'm thirty eight. So like there's no. You just fucking put it on a on a. It, like, you know, obviously it was kind of during COVID. Yeah. So it's obviously you just put it on the doorstep, fucked off. Um. But she was very kind enough to like message me, and then when, after she finished work, she dropped off the vinyl, and Brad fine. Brad got it, but he was very close to not getting it. Yeah. I mean that's just fucking. That's typical, that, isn't it? I swear, I hate these career companies because they literally just fuck you over. They just don't give a shit. Like, the amount of times they put my vinyls in the bin, I'm like, come on, man, just just chuck it over or just put it somewhere. Yeah, you, you know what I hate? You know when it says fragile and you just see them like, there you go, and then like, they, they like drop it down and you're like, it literally says fragile, dickhead. Oh, man, I've seen some shit. <laughs> but yeah, um, eventually got it in the end. Uh, it's produced by Matt Bales. Um even Master themselves said like it's very sonically impressive for them. Um, I think at that time it did sound better because the first few albums sounded good, but this one was very clean. It sounded great. Not to say that it ever, you know, diluted the heaviness of the album, but I felt like this was perfect. And since then, everything's been a smooth sale. Like every album sounds better than the last. Um, so this was released on Relapse Records, famous for releasing a lot of fucking good albums. We'll have to uh, hit them up in the DMs now sometime. You, you know, there's there's a lot of like record labels that I really didn't really hear of until like I started looking at like started getting vinyl. Yeah, like, I think record labels are always the second thought. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, like I didn't know relapse was a thing. I know Gate Creep has also been on relapse. Yeah. Um, they they've really bounced around. I'm pretty sure they're on Nuclear Blast now. Yeah. No, they have been about, to be fair. But no, yeah, um, yeah no, I, I never really, like, there's loads of like, underground record labels at the minute, or like, kind of medium size that really fucking got amazing bands to the name, to be fair. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, Relapse is definitely not a stranger to that. They've got a lot of good bands on there, Mass on one of them. Um, so, yeah, uh, it was released. This is a re release, obviously. Um, on March the 3rd, 2015. So the album came out, I think it was 2006. Um, so it's been about, but this is probably the best vinyl look, looking wise, you know, with the green marble. Um, but let me talk about the album, sir. It's fucking brilliant. It's again, it's not my favorite master on album, but it does have my favorite song, The Wolf is Loose. And I think, for Brand's perspective as a drummer, it's probably where he shines the most. I feel like he really started to evolve in this. Um, his fills. Always been incredible, but some of the things he does in this are just like, how the fuck are you doing this, man? <laughs> um, but as a whole, the album, it, it changes as it goes along. So The Wolf is Loose obviously starts you off like very brutal, um, very what you'd expect of Mastodon. And then as it goes on, you get songs like Sleeping Giant, you know, which tend to be a bit more somber in a way, and a bit more, not a ballad, but something that's a nice palate cleanse in the middle of the album. Um, so every song sort of has a bit of personality and I know that uh, some of the members are quite into country. So you do actually see some country guitar playing mix of metal, which is, I don't see that very often, to be honest. 
I feel like uh, every so often, but the way that he plays in this, is for at least for its time, it wasn't really much of a thing. But he managed to bring yeah. in these influences and make it work. I mean, there's probably a couple of power and metal bands that are Western themed. If not, I think we've just given someone an idea. Um, uh, yeah, there's probably some like power metal band somewhere going, yeah, I mean, to be fair, talking about shit, gunslinging and all that shit. You like country, so maybe this is a direction you want to take your band in. No. <laughs> Uh, you, like to keep, you don't like your salt or your chips want to keep nah, them you know what no nah, I like country man but honestly fuck that <laughs> this is the thing that Mastodon did it very interestingly um, like Circle of Sasquatch and stuff like that um, it's, it's not like they've got country mixed in with the metal it's the fact that he's playing like country style riffs you know but they still retain mm. the heaviness of it so it's groovy, it's heavy, it's very in your face. So I think they've done it in an interesting way. Because like like you said, you expect it in a lot of folk metal bands and a lot of power metal bands because they sort of layer it on as it is, as a folk piece, but not not in this. And that's what I like about it. Yeah, like, you know, the thing is, like, Mastodon's one of the only bands that could really pull that off without it being gimmicky. Yeah, that's very true. Like, they're a progressive yeah, I mean... band, but they, they, they managed to do the influences well and it doesn't feel forced and it's not just in there for the sake of it you can totally actually like the, you know the music that they listen to and they want to implement it in a way that's not going to be cringe um so successfully done there it's got crystal skull on this album which has always been one of their biggest hits ever since they released it it's just i think as an album uh it retains a lot of the heaviness that people love from mastodon and i know that there's quite a lot of fans as well that would like them to go back to this style. I'm personally happy with the direction that they're going in because they still make amazing music and every album's different. This album smashes. It's fucking sick. Um, I hope to get a lot of Mastodon vinyls in the future. This is the start of my big collection of Mastodon. But yeah, I mean, if you haven't listened to this album, give it a listen. It's a fucking 10 out of 10 for me. I gave it a listen again before we jumped on air. It's one of those ones that I can always come back to. Like, mm. do you have those albums, you know, when you just like, even after like 10 years, like, because I was talking about it and this, I remember going to CX and getting this album when I was 16 and I walked mm. in and the guy was like, you're in for a treat, boy. And I was like, hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I tell you, I tell you, can we go kind of off sub- topic here? Go on, I'll, I'll give you a free pass, go on. I'll tell you what's an amazing album that's just come out. Well, for me, I know it's kind of got mixed reviews, but like the new uh, Turnstile album. Okay. Um, the new Turnstile album. I really like that, to be fair. Like they've gone kind of into like the post-hardcore um, era from the 90s. Yeah. Um, makes like a little bit indie. And I really fucking like it, mate. When, when we finish, I'm going to force you to listen to it. I made Dylan and he just went, it kind of sounds like higher power to uneducated ears. I'm like, well, you're uneducated. That's why you shouldn't fucking say your opinion. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm definitely down for giving it a listen. I'll see what. No, it's I'll listen about. to it. it. It's fucking. It's really good. It's really good. Um, it's refreshing to sort of hear. Yeah, that is the vinyl vault for this episode. If you like it, let us know, and don't forget like and subscribe because we want. Yeah, forget. like and subscribe again. There's like, did you know how many fucking people want to subscribe to the last video? Go on there. Another ninety six percent, Brad. Oh, that's fucking. See ya. I'm not gonna lie, he's actually ridiculous. Fuck yeah. that cunt there with his glasses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, but like, it is you... actually like, come on, subscribe, man. If you don't subscribe, the channel, then you hate Mastodon and you hate Incendiary. And if you obviously clicked on this video, you're probably fans of the band, and you wouldn't want us to let them know that you don't like them. Yeah. I so hate yeah, to, uh, I hate to leave a horse's head in your bed. <laughs> but yeah, um. If you like this content and you want us to keep doing the vinyl vault, let us know. At the moment, we're sort of in a limbo stage. We're trying to try out different things, see what works, see what doesn't. Um, we're enjoying what we're doing to try different types of content. And you yeah, know, we do have I, some more ideas planned. Yeah, I think like the, the entire notion for this is to be more than just a podcast where we interview people. Yeah. Um, we, want, like, imp- we, we want sort of like more fan communication as well. So, you know, if you have listened to any of these two albums, drop it down. And I mean, we normally do respond to most comments. That is um, true. We do. 
uh, so like we can always chat about it.